President Trump on Friday announcing that churches and other houses of worship should no longer need to abide by the same restrictions that have forced businesses across the country to close during this pandemic. Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. So I'm correcting this injustice and calling houses of worship essential. I call upon governors to allow our churches and places of worship to open right now. The president adding that if governors of those states won't let churches open, he will override them, though it's still not clear if he has the authority to do so. Joining us now, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. Secretary, good morning. Thanks so much for being here, and happy Memorial Day to you. Uh, same to you, Sandra, and great to be with you and your viewers. Thanks. Absolutely. It is Sunday morning, Memorial Day weekend, and millions of Americans across the country are waking up wondering if it is safe to return to their to their church or their place of worship this morning. You tell them what? Well, we believe it is as long as your church is taking appropriate precautions. And we've put out guidance to, the, to that effect. You know, my, uh, my church back in Indianapolis, uh, what are they doing? They're, uh, they're, they've got appointments. You sign up so that they don't get overcrowded. Uh, you get screened for temperature as well as symptoms as you come in. You socially distance among family units in the church. The church has been sanitized by the cleaning workers there. Uh, so we can get back to work, back to school, and back to worship in safe ways because of President Trump's historic response here. Secretary Azar, it has been fascinating to see some of the accommodations that churches made, even during the shutdown, holding online services, drive-up services, et cetera. Uh, the CDC guidelines have been released. We have some of them for you up on the screen. While they are lengthy, we, we chose some of the most important ones. Of course, that is making sanitizers and soaps handy for all the parishioners that enter the building, wearing cloth masks, keeping a high level of cleanliness, social distancing, of course. And what struck me also was limiting the the sharing of books and hymnals in pews and chairs that are made available. You see the same thing with restaurants and, and menus. They're going to have one-time menus so that, uh, you know, people aren't using the same things in front of them. The Washington Post this week was reporting that the reason for the delay in this guidance from the CDC on faith-based operations was because there was disagreement between the CDC and the White House are both in agreement on those guidelines, Mr. Uh, Secretary? Yes, yes, they are. You know, there's an iterative process that we engage in with CDC, the White House, and other parts of the interagency to just make sure whatever we put out is as good as possible. You know, it doesn't help a, a priest, a pastor, an imam, a, a rabbi much to get a 60 page single space public health document that uh, that goes through everything as if you have a master's in epidemiology. So we, we put information like that out also, but we want to make sure we put actionable understandable information out to uh, the leaders of faith communities, but also our summer camp directors, our school leaders, and uh, those who run small businesses. So it's, a, it's just a process to make sure we're fitting our information to our audience. I want to get to summer school and school in general in just a, a, a moment, as well as those summer camps. But first, I want to take this big picture, because the FDA commissioner, Dr. Hahn, this morning, he put out a statement, and he essentially said, this virus is not contained yet. And so while we understand that millions of Americans will be heading out to enjoy Memorial Day services and celebrations, it is up to the individual, to you as an American, to protect yourself and limit the spread of this virus. What is your message this morning, Mr. Secretary? Well, certainly I would endorse what Dr. Hahn had to say there, but I would also add that thanks to President Trump's and the, our governor's historic response to this, we have to and we can get back to work, to school, to community, to engagement, um, because it's not an issue of health versus our economy. It's actually an issue of health versus health. By being locked up in our homes, um, there's very real health consequences. The social and economic dislocation leads to suicide and mental illness. We have hundreds of thousands of fewer cancer screenings and treatments going on. We have less preventive services. Millions of kids aren't getting their pediatric vaccinations. Those are real, discernible, immediate health consequences that have to be considered just as much as the spread of this disease has to be considered. We have heard that warning from you, Secretary Azar, but now Dr. Fauci, who 
once said at a Capitol Hill hearing that he is only looking at the science and the medical side of things. He is now putting out a new warning and a new interview, sounding the alarm on shutting down and staying shut down for too long. I'll throw his words up on the screen. He said this, we can't stay locked down for such a considerable period of time that you might do irreparable damage and have unintended consequences, included consequences for health. Perhaps is this a sign that Dr. Fauci and others inside the administration the task force team itself might be seeing that some states are taking their lockdown and shutdown orders too far, Secretary Azar? Well, I, I think Dr. Fauci's uh, pers perspective right there is very wise, which is it requires balance. You know, uh, we took the measures of shutdown at the time because the president, under the circumstances, those were the right measures to recommend. But now, now that we have the, one of the world's best testing systems, more testing going on than anywhere else in the world, now that we have our states really in the driver's seat with contact tracing, testing, and isolation of cases, and 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 seeking out and and containing various out breaks. Um, we have the tools to get back up and running again in a safe, smart way. And we, sh we just can't stay locked down forever, as Dr. Fauci said. We hear you. And I, I know there's many Americans who feel the same way about that while wanting to still be safe and stop the spread of this virus. That being said, we've heard a lot of that from President Trump. And in a new interview, speaking to Maria Bartiromo this week, uh, he not only sounds the alarm about staying closed too long, um, but he also starts to point fingers and says that there's politics at play here. Here's the president. Your critics want you to keep it closed going into the election? Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's a, it's a political thing in addition. Uh, I think because some they're states, saying you're putting money, uh, business ahead of lives. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I think <laughs> the people that want to see the right thing happen, they agree with me. We have to get our country open. Secretary Azar, are politics at play, and have politics played any part in impeding your ability to keep the country safe? Well, I don't, I don't want to get into any type of politics discussion, but I'll tell you this, Sandra. I just had the pleasure of, uh, of traveling on commercial airlines down to North Carolina and Florida this week. North Carolina led by Democratic Governor Cooper and Florida led by Republican Governor DeSantis. And in both states, we're seeing reopening. We're seeing reopening in safe ways. The Coca-Cola 600 is going to run today, NASCAR. I got to see the precautions that they're taking at the Charlotte Speedway to make that happen. I got to be in Florida at the Mayo Clinic to see how they're reopening to get elective procedures back up and running to do preventive care and make sure people are getting the health care they need. And I just I think it's great to see how we're working closely with our governors and and just helping to bring this country back again. All right. Final thoughts, because I just told our viewers I'd ask you about it. And you ask parents anywhere in this country right now. They're wondering about summer camps. They're wondering about summer school. And most importantly, they're wondering about their kids returning to school in the fall. What can you tell us about where you stand on whether or not that's going to happen? Well, first and foremost, I would say to any parent, judge your individual circumstances first. Are you, your child, or other household members particularly vulnerable or at risk? Because you've always got to be looking out to protect your household unit first in making these decisions. Then I'd say follow the guidance of your local leaders. This is locally led, state supervised, federally supported. We've put out guidance about schools and summer camps getting reopened and safe procedures to do so. But as always, your local and state leaders know Know the circumstances on the ground best, follow their guidance. But I, I hope that we'll be back at summer camp. I hope we'll be back at school. Again, there are ways to do it safely. Uh, we don't have to be in our houses to be safe. We can do this safely. With the few seconds I have left, as far as a vaccine, you and I spoke earlier this week about that. Are you optimistic as the White House is that we could see one by end of year? This is a very credible objective. You know, we just signed a deal with AstraZeneca for the Oxford vaccine, where by October we could have 100 million doses of vaccine and 300 million doses okay. by early next year. And we're going to place multiple bets like this and, and drive Operation Warp Speed because the President Trump has said he demands that we reduce inefficiency in that system when we get these kind of results, if at all possible. Okay. Secretary Azar, really appreciate your time on this Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for Thank sharing you. your Sunday morning with us.